the book of John where, where Jesus says, I am. And after thinking about it more carefully, I actually decided that I, I think, and maybe I'm wrong, but I think I know what John is up to in this book. And I would rather call it the seven I am statements because one of them, you will see, is slightly different from the others. And there's, there's seven miracles in the book of John that give way to the ultimate miracle, which is Jesus rising from the dead. And that was basically Sunday morning sermon. If some of you were here Easter Sunday, that was it in a nutshell. Um, but there's also these seven I am statements that give way to one broad, grand I am statement. And I think John did it on purpose. I think John wrote his gospel telling about these seven miracles and the seven times where Jesus said, I am, and that they connect together to this one great miracle, Jesus rising from the dead, and this one great I am statement, before Abraham was, I am. So, um, we're going to talk about it a little bit. So, if, if um, first, I guess I should set it up this way. Exodus 3, 14 through 16 is where Jesus talks about, uh, I'm sorry, Moses records for us the time where he asked God, what is your name? Do you remember this? Jesus, uh, Abraham, let me try to start that again. <laughs> Rewind, undo. Moses is standing before the burning bush and he hears this voice say, slip your shoes off because this is holy ground. <clears throat> And I am calling you to go to my people and be the deliverer and set them free. And, and Moses says, well, suppose someone asked me, who sent me? Who do I tell them sent me? Well, what's your name, in other words? And God says to, to Moses, I am that I am. I will be what I will be being. Um, we, we talked a couple of weeks ago about the Hebrew name Yahweh, and or some would, would pronounce it Jehovah, depending on how these letters here, or this letter here is a Vav, some would say it's pronounced V, some would say it's pronounced W, and then the vowel markings underneath and all that. And the, the reason we talked about it was that, um, that Bob Mailer said, if you look at the mountains of Israel, you see Yahweh, yod Hey vav Hey, these four letters stamped into the mountains of Israel. It's a really phenomenal deal. Um, supposedly, that you can see it from satellite imagery, the name Yahweh in the mountains of Israel. Pretty fascinating. Where does this name come from? Well, it comes from Exodus chapter 3. Moses says, who do I say sent me? Who are you? And God doesn't so much give a name. Like It's, it's not like that God says, well, I'm, by the way, Moses, I'm George. Nice to meet you. He doesn't give a proper name. Moses says, who are you? And what God does is, I am. Now think about that. Have you ever stopped to just think the creative genius of that statement? And accurately, it's not only I am, but it would be translated, I am who I am. I will be who I will be being. And if, if you know languages, the word is, the word am, that's about existence. I mean, that's how we say who and where, and that's how we facilitate our lives. So God says, I am. That, that would be the literal translation would be I am. Now, when Jesus comes on the scene in the book of John, he gives seven I am statements. And here's what's so miraculous about Jesus is that he claims to be God, but he does it in a way 
that he doesn't just come right out and say, I'm God. He says, I am the son of my father. God is my father. Well, he was saying, I am God. Because, you know, look at Nick. Nick is Howard. I am Howard. Nick is Howard. If Nick is Howard, and if he's the son of Keith, then he's Howard. Right? And so, that's the same way Jesus was saying, my father is God. And, and there's so many places like John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So um, why, why do you think that they got so mad at Jesus that they picked up rocks and said, we're going to stone you? How dare you say that you equate yourself with being around before Abraham? Well, are you greater than Abraham? Abraham's dead. Jeremiah's dead. All the great prophets are dead. You're saying you're going to live forever? Who do you think you are? So when Jesus made these I am statements, he knew exactly what he was doing. And a good Jewish mind would immediately, when they heard Jesus say, I am, they would immediately say, wait, Exodus 3.14. Who are you? I am. I will be what I will be being. They equated that uh, in ways that we can't imagine. So we're going to move through the seven I am statements. The first one is, Jesus says that I am the bread of life. Look at the verse. This is John 6.35. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. And he who believes in me will never be thirsty. I am. The, the phrasing is Exodus 3.14-esque kind of talk. I am the bread of life. The bread of life. Wow. Wow. Think of what he's saying. I am your sustenance. I am your nourishment. But Jesus knows that, that we're hungry. He knows we have need for food. He knows we have need for, for water to drink. And, and he, he, he cares about that. And not only does he know it, but he provides for us. And, and then more than, just, more than just physical food, but there's something deeply spiritual going on here. He says, you eat bread every day to get enough nourishment, to have energy to keep living. But the bread that I'm talking about, this is bread for life. If you, and in fact, remember, it was in this same chapter, John 6, where he says to them, I am the bread. And, and he says, I want you to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Now that would be gross if you really took it in a literal way. But what he means is ingest my teachings. Internalize the things that I'm showing you. Let it live inside you. And when that happens, then it's just like bread for you. It, it nourishes you. So Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Secondly, the light of the world. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. This is John chapter 8, verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I am the light of the world. Now this, tonight, I, I did not mean for this to be a sermon. This is interactive, and I'd like to hear comments, you know. If you have any thoughts about the first one, the bread of life, the light of the world, I am the light of the world. Anybody, does this mean anything special to you? You got any thoughts or any comments about it? What, what do you think Jesus could be getting at? I am the light of the world. Any ideas? Well, he always was. He, he created all the light that there is, and he is the light. I mean, he's, you know, he always was, is, and will be. That's how I think of him as being the light. Always he's was, always creator. is, always will be. Yeah. And 
Um, and, and I think this one too is just like you were getting at. It, it's a spiritual thing. Um, if you have Jesus, you're going to always have the light shining on your direction, which way to go and what to do. And uh, He is the light of the world. Um, have you ever thought about the fact that the sun was created, what was it, on day four in the creation account, I believe? In the beginning of the Okay, so, um, but, but there was already light and darkness day one, light and darkness day two, light, before there was ever our way of thinking of day and night. So um, there's a special connection with the light of the world. It's, it's more, to me, it, it's the source. He is the source of, of knowing anything or understanding or having anything revealed to you. It's, it's because of the light of the world. And so Jesus says, I am the bread of life and I am the light of the world. Any more thoughts about that one before we go on? Guy? Guide, yeah, he's our guide. If you look to him, you won't fall. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, I think about when you said that what popped into my mind, there were, when we were in the West Slope of uh, Colorado, there were outfitters who would take tours, you know, take people on hunting tours or all kinds of things like that. And I'm, and I'm not a hunter, but I'm told it is a good investment to have someone who really knows the territory. <laughs> you don't want to just get out there and just kind of find your way on your own if, if you can help it. So, so he's the guide of the world. I, I like that. The third thing, he's the gate. So Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He said, I am the light of the world. And he says, I am the gate. Here it is, John chapter 10, verse 9. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. Now here's something that I think is so important. Whenever a, a religion starts up, um, here's how it typically goes. Some guy gets a bunch of ideas and he starts touting his beliefs and his views and says them in kind of catchphrases and people go, oh, that, I can resonate with that. And then before too long, people start saying, hey, that, he's saying what I've always felt. That's what I've wanted to say, but I didn't have the words for it. That's exactly what I believe. And then, lo and behold, a movement starts, and then people come in, and, and but eventually this leader dies. Now what? Well, somebody says, you know, he had some good teachings, and now he's dead. We better write this stuff down. And so the teachings come out, and that's how religions get started. That's how world religions get started. But Jesus doesn't do that. Notice that Jesus doesn't say, here's my teachings, although he does teach his whole life, but here's what I mean. He's, he says, me, I, myself, I am the gate. I am the bread. I am the light. So, um, anyone who comes to him I am the gate, whoever enters through me will be saved. Not, not if you say the right things or believe the right things, but you have to come to me. I am the gate. You come in through me and passage into eternal life is through me. Any thoughts? No? Nathan's saying no. He doesn't have a, a thought on this. Okay. <laughs> um, I, you know what I always think of? When I hear the gate, um, it was a practice of Jewish shepherds to try to find a place when, like when they had them in the pastures, in the green pastures, and when they knew it was getting dark, and if they had been out feeding in open territory, to try to corral the sheep into a cave. They'd find a large cave. And the shepherd himself would lay his body down in front of the entrance to the cave. Because, why? Because there's wolves, there's ferocious beasts out there who would attack the animals. And so, Jesus quite literally is saying, I, I'm the gate. 
I'm, I'm the one that provides safety. Um, it all is because of me. The Good Shepherd, number four. He said, I am the Good Shepherd. And remember that each time he says one of these, the religious elite, you know, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Essenes, they are standing off looking like, wait a minute, did this rabbi just say what I think he said? I mean, I could just see them. Oh, no, he didn't. He's, he just said that in the language of Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. Who does he think he is? I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate. I'm the good shepherd. Well, here he is saying it again. I am the good shepherd. Uh, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. John chapter 10, verse 11. What do you think of when you think of a good shepherd? What comes to mind? Protection. Yeah, protection. He's always looking after the sheep. Yeah. In other words, it sounds. I, what I hear you saying, it's like the sheep are the most important, more important than even myself. I don't care if I'm sick, but I'm going I'm to take care of the sheep. Well, what would a bad shepherd look like? One who's still under the tree and just watch his flock go. Oh, yeah. Way. <laughs> See ya. Hey, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, just, I'm going to hang out in the shade here and just drink some Kool Aid and lemonade. Fend for yourself. Fend for yourself. But our life doesn't do that. No, he does not do that. Um, when we were in Colorado, we lived. Um, a mile from a sheep farm um, ranch and um, we would kind of come out of our subdivision it's about three miles outside of town up in the foothills we'd wind down come around a little hill and when it was the right time in the spring or they'd do it again going into the fall they would be either bringing the sheep in from the highlands or, or taking them out up to the highland and sheep would be everywhere all over the, the road and you guys sheep are the dumbest animals <laughs> have you ever noticed it I mean uh, you in your car you pull right up to one of them and just be staring at the grill of your car beep 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 what <laughs> <You know? laughs> but I think that must be like what we are like to God sometimes like, don't you get it? <laughs> you are again. No, he's, he takes care of us. He's a good shepherd. And he's never going to lead us into danger. The fifth one, I am the resurrection and the life. Wait a minute, Jesus. Just what do you mean by that? Who do you think you are? The resurrection and the life. There you go using that. Exodus 3.14 language again, like I am saying, just like you're equal to God. Jesus said to her, by the way, this was our text Sunday morning, remember it? He said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. He's the resurrection and the life. The resurrection, he can speak resurrection to something that's dead. But the life, he can continue to sustain the life and make sure that you stay living. He is the resurrection and the life. I'm going to go ahead, unless anyone has a thought, I want to make sure we get all of these in. Anyone want to share anything? The next one is when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And this was in uh, John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus answered, remember the context, he's at the, the first Passover meal. And um, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Um, and remember how they, how they had reacted. I think it was Philip just before this says, show us the way. And, um, and Jesus says, I, I am the way. I am 
Yahweh. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. So, it, taken individually, these statements would be borderline blasphemous to someone who did not believe what Jesus said. These are the kinds of statements that would get you put on a cross. But yet, Jesus makes them fully knowing the consequences, not because he's trying to convince. I don't believe, I think he's just speaking truth. He is. He, he is the Son of God. I am all of these things. And then uh, the last one, I am divine. John 15, 5. 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So again, this takes it beyond the idea of just sustenance and staying alive, but to being productive and to being fruitful. If you remain in me, then you're going to bear much fruit. And apart from me, you can do nothing. Sounds very similar to what he said, I'm the gate. And it, if you come in through me, I'm the only way you can come in. You come in through me, and that's the only way. There is no other, there is no other gate. In fact, one time Jesus said, people who try to get in by other ways are just like um, robbers who try to get in the sheep pen without going through the front entrance. And he described our enemy, the devil, as... The devil comes to steal and kill and destroy. John 10, 10. So that's all, that's all he's about. That's all the enemy does. So now what I'd like to do um, is to correlate these seven I am statements with another I am statement that is worded differently than the other seven. Before Abraham was, I am. Think of the power of this remarkable statement. So Jesus is in a heated exchange with religious leaders. And I mean, they're going back and forth and they're trying to nail him. They're trying to get him to stumble uh, and trip over himself, but he's, he's not going to do it. And finally, he makes this statement before Abraham was, I am. And you can almost hear the religious crowd saying, what do you mean before Abraham was, you are? How could you even suggest that? You're not even 50 years old yet. Abraham, we're talking centuries, and he died a long time ago. And you're saying you were before Abraham? By the way, Jesus, you're not using good syntax. You need to go back to English class and learn how we speak properly, grammatically. Uh, am I right, Sharon? Before Abraham was, I am? What? No, you should have said, before Abraham was, I was. But Jesus, Jesus speaks truth. Before Abraham was, guess what? Before any of that, I am, and I am who I am, and I will be being who I will be being. It is the total in, encapsulation of the I am statements. So now, compare all of the seven I am statements with the seven miracles. Sunday morning, we talked about the miracles. Um, just recount them with me. John chapter 2, he turns water into wine. Uh, John chapter 4, he, he heals a nobleman's son from a distance. to a great distance between them. It shows that he, he's not concerned about space. You know, a great distance doesn't matter to him. Longitude, latitude matters very little to him. He's in control. Um, John chapter 5, paralytic man, 38 years. He's been He's been paralyzed, and he's always trying to get in the Bethesda pool, but somebody else beats him down to the stirring waters. So he doesn't get his healing. And Jesus comes along and heals him. Jesus shows that 
Time doesn't matter to him. 38 years, uh, that's nothing. I'll reverse time. I will reverse all the pain of 38 years. Um, in John chapter 6, he um, feeds 5,000 people with just five loaves and two fish. You don't do that. I mean, nobody does that. But Jesus did. Sit down in groups of 50 and 100 and and just be patient. We're going to bring you fish and and um, bread. And, and they had so much food left over, 12 baskets full. Um, and then the, the healing of the man who was born blind, that had never happened before. We're talking about a man who could not see his entire life. And I suppose in that moment, Jesus created a new visual pathway through the nerves to his visual cortex to connect to his cornea and his retina. I, I, he never had seen before. And now all of a sudden, he sees. Which shows that Jesus not only is over space, not only is he over time, not only is he over elements like food and, and water, but he can actually be over life and its very functions. And it, he heals. And then he walks on water. That's amazing. So this is far more than just being bigger than, you know, someone's hopes and expectations and a really great teacher. There's way more than that. Jesus is over, he's over physical bodies, he's over time, he's over space, he's over the elements under his feet. We sink when we step on water, but not Jesus. He can walk on it. And then the ultimate, just when you thought you can't top anything else, but then he raises Lazarus from the dead, John chapter, seven, uh, chapter 11. John chapter 11. He raises Lazarus from the dead. And actually, him raising Lazarus from the dead is really one of the seven miracles, but it feeds into the ultimate miracle. Uh, John 20 reference, references it, verse 10. Jesus had to rise from death. His raising Lazarus from the dead is a mirror, uh, a picture of what he's going to do himself. He conquers death, hell, and the grave. In other words, Jesus makes seven I am statements, and he's not just talking to hear himself talk, but he backs it up with his life. He is the fulfillment of every one of those seven I am statements with these seven miracles. So here's what um, I'd like to do for a moment is, I, I only looked at this this afternoon. I haven't thought of this a whole lot. In fact, I'd like to get your ideas on it. Maybe you could see it differently, but, but I have tried to see if I could find any direct connection, any correlation between the I am statement and the miracle, because to me, it's just too coincidental that John uses seven I am statements that lead to one great I am statement, and he uses seven miracles that lead to one great miracle, sort of in the same way that John the Revelator, John, same guy that wrote this book, wrote the book of the Revelation, and you have seven bowls, seven seals that are opened up, which open up to seven bowls, and then you have seven trumpets, and there's this idea of perpetual fulfillment going on. I see a correlation between some of these. For instance, the statement where Jesus says, I am the vine, it makes perfect sense that he could turn water into wine. Um, Jesus makes the statement, I am the bread of life. So no wonder he could feed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. Um, that I am the light of the world. These are not hard and fast, but this is just my thinking. And, I, and again, I'd like to hear what you have to think about it too, but I, I see a correlation with a man that was born blind. Now he can see the light of the world opened his eyes. The gate, I connect that to the paralytic of 38 years, and here's the reason why. The, get, the place where... Um, the paralyzed man was healed was called the Bethesda Pool. It was a, a community gathering place. 
Um, gates in ancient cities were prominent places. Typically there would be one main gate to enter into the city, but there might be, some cities had as many as 12 gates to enter from different points, but the gate was a significant place to meet and to gather, and the Bethesda pool was such a place. Five colored, uh, five covered patios, colonnades, where people came together in the healing heaven. Um, the resurrection and the life, I see pictures of connecting that with Jesus walking on water. Uh, resurrection from death, that doesn't happen. Walking on water, that doesn't happen. I suppose five and six, you know, either one of those could connect easily with, with the miracle on the right. For instance, the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, Lazarus was raised from the dead because Jesus is the way, he's the truth, he is the life. Just as you're looking at this, any thoughts? And would you, I mean, can you see it in a different way? Help me to see it in a different way because I'm just kind of thinking out loud. I didn't put a whole lot of thought of this, but I, I do see some connections. Anybody got some observations? Well, suffice to say that Jesus Christ is more than just a good man. He's, he's more than a good teacher. He's not just a great prophet. You know, that's, that's what people hope he will be. Just let him be one of those things. And I, I will be able to acknowledge that, that Jesus was a great teacher. Of course he's a great teacher, but that wasn't the claim that he made. His claim is, I am the Son of God. That's his claim. And either he is or he isn't. But don't say, oh, he's a great prophet. Jesus is a great prophet, and Confucius was another great prophet, and Muhammad was a great prophet, and, and you know, there's a lot of great prophets. No, no, no. Jesus doesn't leave that choice for us. He says, I am the Son of God. I am who I am. I will be who I will be being. I equate myself with my Father who is in heaven. God is my Father. And when he said so, he was saying, I am God. And he lived a life to back it up, didn't he? Well, let's pray, you guys. Father, we are grateful for your holy word. It's a lamp to our feet. It's a guide. It's our signpost. Your word, Lord, is everything to us. I just pray that, that you would live in us, O oh God. Let the light of the world shine in our dark places. Help us to walk through that gate. We surrender to you. We come to you. You are the gate. We're not going to try to come in in any other way. We surrender our lives to you. We love, we love you, Lord. We praise you. Lord, I just pray that this rich understanding would dwell in our spirits and, and feed us, feed our thirsty souls. Good Shepherd, take us into green pastures and feed our hungry souls on the truth of your word. And also bring us back together next time, O oh Lord, so that we can encourage one another in our faith. Be with each one of us as we go from this place tonight, we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Blessings. Can I ask for a special, special prayer? Sure. Uh -huh. This past Sunday, there was a horrifying horse accident. Oh, I don't know if any of these folks have heard.